Okay, so I didn't meet my goal of 15 minutes, but I'm going to try to get through the rest of this as quickly as possible without leaving too much out. Uh, basically, so we've talked about uh, the mediation, the resolution process, but there are times when parties have been unable or unwilling to resolve the dispute themselves, so they proceed to a due process hearing. This is where an impartial, trained hearing officer hears the evidence and issues a hearing decision. During a due process hearing, each party has the opportunity to present their views in a formal legal setting using witnesses, testimony, documents, and legal arguments that each believes is important for the hearing officer to consider. Uh, so a decision on the issue in the hearing can be made. Since the due process hearing is a legal proceeding, a party will often choose to be represented by an attorney. Now there are um, two systems that states can choose to go through a one-tier system where state level agency is responsible for conducting the due process hearing and an appeal from a due process hearing decision goes directly to the court. Um, that is what we are in in Georgia. A two-tier due process system starts at the school district level and then moves to the state level and then the court for appeals. I um, also want to note that um, the question of which party has the burden of proof in IDEA due process hearing, the parent or the school system, has been addressed uh, while IDEA doesn't state who has burden of proof. The Supreme Court has held that unless state law assigns the burden of proof differently, in general, the party who requests the hearing will have the burden of proof in their case. So, you know, we're on the one-tier system, so the SEA um, is responsible for conducting the hearing to ensure that not later than 45 days after the 30-day resolution period expires, a final decision is reached in the hearing and a copy of the decision is mailed to each of the parties. The hearing officer may grant specific extensions of this time period at the request of either party. Actually, and, and here's an interesting fact, that personally identifiable information is deleted from the from the results and that due process hearing finding and decisions are available to the public. You can find them. Um, on the searchable databases on um, the web, the web, the interweb. <laughs> um, all right, but anyway, I've 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 got a little uh, time devoted here to to talk about the hearing officer because he has or she has an important role in the decision over who presides over due process hearing. There are qualifications under IDEA that the hearing officer may not be an employee of the state education agency or the school system involved in the education or care of the child. And although the school system pays selected individuals to serve as hearing officers, IDEA explicitly states that they are not to be considered employees of the agency. So to safeguard the impartiality of the hearing process, the hearing officer must not have a personal or professional interest that will conflict with the hearing officer's objectivity in the hearing. This is really important qualification because it points directly to the requirement that the hearing officer, the person who makes a decision on the issue in the due process complaint, must be impartial. That impartiality of the hearing officer is essential. And not only that, he or she must uh, also be knowledgeable about understanding the provisions of IDEA, the state and federal regulations that pertain to IDEA, and how it can be interpreted legally. Due process hearings occur when the LEA and parent are unable to resolve their differences through less formal means. Since the parties are at an impasse, it's essential that the hearing officer be impartial, and as we've seen, IDA contains such a requirement. It's the hearing officer's job to weigh the merits of each party's 
argument, evidence, and witnesses in light of what IDEA and state law require. Also bearing in mind relevant federal and state regulations pertaining to the Act and legal interpretations of the Act by federal and state courts. The hearing officer must possess the knowledge and ability to conduct hearings in accordance with appropriate standard legal practice. If a party disagrees with the hearing officer's decision, they do have recourse for appealing that decision. But if they don't appeal it, the decision made by the hearing officer is final. So, um, to appeal in a one-tier system like Georgia has, the SEA is the entity that conducts the initial due process hearing and issues the decision. A state level review of hearing decision is not available. If one of the parties disagrees with the decision, the only appeal will be for the party to bring civil action in an appropriate state or federal court. Remember, there is a timeline. The SEA must ensure that not later than 30 days after receipt of a request for a review, a final decision is reached in the review and a copy of the decision is mailed to the parent. All right, so what is the child's placement until completion of the due process hearings? Yep, you guessed it. IDA requires that once notice of a due process complaint requesting a due process hearing is sent to the other party during the resolution process time period while waiting for the decision of any impartial due process or court proceedings unless the pa parent or the state or the school district agree otherwise the child must remain in his or her current educational placement pending the completion of the proceedings. That's often referred to as stay put. So there you have it. Due process. Good luck. <laughs>